Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about weapon attachments and all the different ways that you can customize your gun in the Battlefield 4 pre-alpha that was shown on the floor of E3. Now I'm not really sure what this helicopter pilot's up to. I don't think he's going to be able to fly this thing out of here. I also want to lightly address the field upgrades, which is the replacement for squad perks in Battlefield 4. First things first, why don't we talk about the available weapon sights. For the most part, assault rifles, carbines, light machine guns, PDWs all had uh, reflex red dot sights available to them of one times magnification. The first one we're looking at here is the American red dot sight. Simple, same thing as Battlefield 3, nice little circle with a red dot in the center. Then we have the Chinese red dot sight, also known as the Coyote red dot sight, and it looks very similar to a red dot sight that I use on my airsoft weapons. Then we have the Russian PKAS one times holographic sight. This sight is also available in Battlefield 3, except it gives you a little bit of a zoom in BF3. I don't believe it gives you the zoom in BF4, which is actually more realistic. Now it is a holographic sight instead of a red dot sight, which in real life uses different technology than red dot sights to display the targeting reticle. But as far as in-game mechanics go, you shouldn't really be seeing much of a difference in terms of how this sight works over another red dot sight. Now as far as sniper rifles go, on the Scout Elite you could mount the CL6X 6x scope and there was a 20x hunter scope in the game and uh, I believe the 20 times hunter scope is longer than any other scope we had available in Battlefield 3. I think it only went up to 12 times and I even preferred the 8 times scope so it'll be awesome to see what it playing with a 20 times scope is like and how far away we can line up some headshots. Moving on from sights we have the barrel modifiers. Now what's cool about the muzzle brake is aside from the fact that it reduces the kick of the weapon for sacrificing the actual accuracy of the weapon uh, you can see how it actually changes the gun over on the right hand side. It gives you a little green bar uh, where the handling is located. Now what's interesting is that there's no red bar where accuracy is located so maybe that's just not built into the game yet. There was a lot of stuff in the game that just wasn't quite implemented yet. Also, muzzle brake is the only modifier that was in the game for the barrel modification. I'm sure we're going to be seeing suppressors and perhaps heavy barrel stuff. However, there were suppressors for pistols. Moving along to the next category, we can now accessorize our gun with accessories. We have the canted iron sights here, which we've all seen from all the videos, where you turn the gun 45 degrees on its side and you can aim down some iron sights. Then we have the magnifier two times, which is that cool little flip up sight that mounts behind your normal sight and allows you to switch between your normal sight and a two times magnification of that sight. Now it remains to be seen if you can mount this sight behind a say four times sight, but I believe you probably could turning a four times sight into an eight times sight. So there's a lot of really cool customization options you could do with a two times magnifier. Now we have the normal laser pointer, which as far as I can tell is pretty much identical in function to the one from Battlefield 3. You'll see over on the right we get a nice green little bar increase in mobility. So mobility represents your accuracy while firing from the hip. Also notice the description where it says the bright light makes you highly visible but can blind enemies. This will be important when we look at the description of the green laser pointer. This one says can blind enemies if shined directly in their eyes and increases hip fire accuracy. Now it's my theory that the green laser pointer makes you slightly less visible when you're running around the map and you have to be a little bit more accurate to try and blind your enemies. And the red laser pointer makes you highly visible when running around the map but you don't have to be quite as, vis as accurate to blind your enemies with it. Now I'm just basing this mostly on the description of the two devices, but I would assume that DICE would try and make some sort of tactical difference between the two attachments. Then we have the Variable Zoom 14X, which is available to sniper rifles, and this gives you another 14 times magnification mode to any high-powered scope, useful if the user needs more or less magnification than default. This is going to be a great new addition for the recon class who wants to adapt to extreme long range shooting and then to close quarter shooting uh, while using your sight. So this is going to be interesting and I can't wait to see how it plays out. Now I got to add this little comment in here just in case any devs are watching but I hope you guys are working on a kill flash for the recon class. This is a little honeycomb thing that screws onto the end of a sight and it's supposed to kill the flash that is made from scope glint and that sort of thing. This is something that I would love to see in Battlefield 4 because it's already being confirmed that scope glint is back in Battlefield. 
give us an accessory that we can attach to our weapons to get rid of that. Obviously, we have to make the trade-off between that and some other cool accessories, but it would be nice to have that option. Next on the list is the underbarrel accessories, and the first thing up is the bipod. Works the same way as Battlefield 3. Stick it on your gun, deploy it, gonna make your firing a lot more accurate. Next up we have the angled grip. This is one of my favorite new attachments that they put in the game. It's going to uh, reduce the initial recoil of a weapon, making your handling a lot better. So it should allow you to be more accurate with a gun. Again, you can see on the right side how the handling has a nice little green bar on it. Next up we have the vertical grip, and this one says you can move easily and fire at the same time with this grip and it's giving you an increase in the mobility section of the weapon. Now, before I said that uh, mobility meant more accurate hip fire, I think that's what that means in this situation here. It just says you can move and fire at the same time. I don't know if they're saying you can move while ADSing and fire more accurately. I think they're referring to hip fire accuracy for the most part. Let's take a quick look at the pistol sights here. We have the ghost ring here in place of the iron sights. Ghost ring sights are a fairly new innovation that makes acquiring of targets easier with normal iron sights. This is something that if you watch the multiplayer trailer, um, you'll see them using this on the pistol a lot. It looks really cool and I think I might actually be using this uh, on most of my pistols in game. Then we have the Delta RDS. These are basically very small red dot sights that you can mount on a pistol if that's your preferred method of sighting in a weapon. You know, with pistols, a lot of it comes down to aesthetics, so people might not prefer the RDS, but I have a feeling they're gonna be pretty darn effective. Then in the barrel attachment section, we have a compensator, which decreases your recoil, making it easier to handle, but also decreases your accuracy. Then we have an option of two different suppressors, however, they seem to do exactly the same thing uh, regarding stats. Now, if you're not familiar with suppressors in Battlefield, they're basically going to silence your weapon, making it so you don't pop up on the mini-map when you use the weapon. However, they are going to decrease your hipfire accuracy and basically the range of your weapon. Now, like a noob, I forgot to mouse over the accessory section of the pistols in the game. I believe, though, if memory serves me correct, there were the two red and green laser pointer options on there. I don't know if there was a tack light. I don't remember seeing a tack light option for the pistols, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see those making a reappearance for weapons in Battlefield. Lastly, I'd like to talk about field upgrades. Now, these are the specializations that allow you to control uh, what perks you get when your squad ranks up. So far, there's only two different ones to pick from in the game. It's offensive and defensive. I have a feeling that we're going to be able to uh, have a bit more customization when it comes to these field upgrades. But uh, the defensive one here allows you suppression resistance for level 1, grenade boost for level 2, uh, level 3 is explosive resistance, and level 4 is a heal boost, which is a new perk in Battlefield. Uh, this makes the time between taking damage and health regeneration shorter. So if you rank up your squad all the way with a defensive boost, it could make you quite powerful. And I was so eager to grab a screenshot of the defensive field upgrades that I forgot the offensive field upgrades, which is the common one that everybody else was using. But I believe, and uh, if I get corrected on this, I'll annotate this in the video later, but I believe the first level is sprint speed increase for offensive upgrade. Then the second one is an ammo increase. Third one is a grenade increase. And the fourth and final one looks like you get increased suppression effect. Anyway, that wraps it up for the weapon, accessories, attachments, sights, all that cool stuff that you can fit on your gun and customize it that was available in the pre-alpha for Battlefield 3 uh, displayed at E3. Now, there's going to be a lot more weapon attachments, I know this, and uh, I can't wait to see what kind of other modifications we can do to our guns. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.